Welcome back to the Necessity Talk Show. Today we're here with a very special guest, one of the best in the game, one of the best in Lancashire right now, the one and only, one of the best lyricists in the, in the city, the one and the only Soul True. Soul True, say what's up. What's going on, Sean? How y'all feeling, man? Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here, man. Yes, of course, sir. of course. So let's just get into it, man. How did you get into music? Shit, uh, man, when I was younger, I was like into like old school, like Motown, Michael Jackson, all that. Mm. Like, I was into like singing before I was into rapping. Word. Yeah, so like I used to like imitate Michael Jackson, and me and my cousins, we used to like act like we was Temptations, Five Heartbeats, and all that. <laughs> and then, um, as I was growing up, me, my sister, and my cousin, we started listening to uh, Criss Cross and shit. And I just like the way they were, like, they just came out with their own style. They was young, wearing their clothes backwards, had their own swag. And I remember I had a tape recorder, and um, it was this one rap from Criss Cross that I always, like, remembered. And one day I just, like, recited it, and I was telling, like, my friends and shit that it was my rap. So I would go to them, like, yo, listen to this rap I wrote. And I was like, yo, it's fire. So I'm like, yo, I think I could rap. So I just started writing raps. Me and my cousin, we had a we bought a tape recorder, mm -hmm. karaoke machine, and we would just sit on the porch and just like write raps. And we would just, you mean, perform on the porch while people walking by and all that. And we just started, you mean, I was like 10, 11 years old, and we just took off. Went mm -hmm. to middle school, we made tapes. Went to middle school, we were passing them out and all type of shit. And ever since then, like, it just took off from there. Where, when would you say that you started taking music like seriously? Probably when I was like, 16, 17, when I got to high school, mm -hmm. that was like, I was, that was when like, battle rapping was crazy. Mm -hmm. and, Cause we was watching Philly rapper read dollars and all that. So we was like, yo, let's battle. My cousin, uh, Peanut, he used to battle. And he was like, every single day, just battling. And, yeah. and one day I was, he was, he battled somebody and I was just talking shit like behind him. Mm -hmm. I got, you know I mean, my mouth got me in trouble. I ain't gonna say got me in trouble cause I whipped the nigga ass when I battled him. But <laughs> like, I'm like talking shit. And his man's like, oh, battle money, get in, in, in. So we like, all right, whatever. We set it up. And ever since then, I'm just like, yo, I just love doing this shit. Like, I love mm -hmm. rapping. And then, um, you know, me and my cousins, we had our own studio. So we would just make songs all day. And just, it just got to the point where I'm like, this is what I want to do. Like, I love, I love poetry. I love lyricism. I love all that shit. Mm -hmm. So it's just like the competitive nature in me was just like, yo, I want to be that nigga. But I was younger though, but yeah. Even when I was younger though, like um, in them times in high school, I was always the one that didn't really like. I was the one that played the back, so everyone mm -hmm. in the ciphers and shit, and it was like, all right, your turn. And I'll be like, man, I don't feel like I don't want to rap for nobody. So for the longest, like for years, I was just the one that played the back. Mm -hmm. So then when I finally like stepped into my lane, everyone's like, oh shit, like yo, this nigga really rap. Like I know you used to rap back in the day, but like yo, you really rapping, and. You know what I mean? Eventually, I just became who I am now. Mm -hmm. But it's all been like a humble journey. Like, I don't take it like, oh, yeah, I'm that nigga out here. Like, everything, even when people tell me, like, I'm one of the top, whatever, like, I just, it's humble to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm real modest, and everyone tells me, that's like my downfall. Like, yo, you don't, you don't talk enough shit. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't need to. Because you respect a rapper. You yeah, like, like no exactly. Like, I, don't, I don't feel like I don't need to, I don't need to brag. I don't need to be cocky or nothing like that. Like, because mm -hmm. I don't do it for that. I do it for you. You know what I mean? I do it for me. It's like my therapy. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much so that. Your, your album. You feel exactly. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's pretty much that. You know what I mean? Who would you say is like some of your biggest musical inspirations coming up, and like how did they help shape the sound that you have now? Um, my first like real influence was was Jay Z. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my one of my favorite songs from him was Meet the Parents. It was. I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with it. It was like a story. It was a story he told, and it was like about a kid who was like, it was like a kid who was playing a block, like little mm -hmm. gangster nigga, and he run into some old head, and old head's trying to talk to him and all that, and old head killed the young nigga, found out it was his son. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I always like, I always like that shit. So mm -hmm. I made want to tell stories. So that's when I really like got into the lyricism, and that's when I got influenced by that. And then eventually it was J Cole, Kendrick, mm -hmm. you know, the likes of that. Um, those are pretty much my influences from when I started to now. Yeah. And of course, Chris Cross, that's when I started. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was my dudes. How would you describe the sound of Soul True? Um, my sound is, <laughs> it's like, it's very unorthodox. 
because people expect rap all the time from me because mm-hmm. that's when they first started. But I consider myself a free spirit artist. Like I can do it all. Like I can do melodies. I can do the vocals. I can I can rap. I do it all. So that's pretty much my style, and it's more of a soulful style. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Definitely very soulful. That's where I got the name from. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's um that's always been my that's always been my lane. What do you see is like are the biggest challenges that you sometimes face when it comes to making music or writing music and putting it out? Um, taking risks, step uh stepping out the box. Like my first project, I thought I thought I used to think everything was just about rap. Like if you wasn't rapping, you was like I ain't like it. I ain't like the melodies, I ain't like the trap flows and uh I just thought it was just like hip hop, like lyricism. And then my next project was musical therapy and that was when I started like I started connecting with music more on like a soulful level. Mm-hmm. So it was more of the you heard more of the artistry in it. And then the project that I'm working on now is like I feel spiritually connected with music. Like I feel like I'm tapped into like a whole different level when it on music. I, that's why I can't wait to put it out because I can't wait to see I can't wait for people to see like the elevation, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, the progression. Um, so the biggest challenge is, yeah, like stepping out of the box and just wondering like, are they going to like this? Like, are they going to accept this? Cause it's different mm-hmm. than I used to it for me. If it was anybody else, they might like it, but I feel like this, like they're going to see a whole different side. And, but, um, as far as like the challenges is, is that just seeing where, seeing the different levels that I could tap into, you know what I mean? More mm-hmm. than just, just rap songs. So that's definitely like a big big challenge for me. I can't wait to see that. So you've made money with some of your music, right? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the smartest things that I've seen that you did was uh, back during, uh, there was a Tribe Tuesday, Mm -hmm. which if you don't know what Tribe Tuesday is, it's a local open mic night. Uh, But what you did was you came and you you told everybody you weren't releasing your music on Spotify or nothing, Mm -hmm. and you just sold your CDs. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you sell out? Uh, absolutely, three times. Sold out three times three before times. you released it on Spotify. What gave you the idea to, to take that kind of approach to try and get like a foundation for, for your music before you put it on streaming? All right, so, oh, damn, I forgot. I can't believe, I can't even believe I did that. One of my inf- biggest influences, Nipsey Hussle. Word. Yeah, like, back before he got like big, I was telling niggas like, yo, Nipsey's gonna be that nigga. But, like, I was mm-hmm. telling him, and... The Victory uh, Lap, mm-hmm. the Victory Lap album came out, and like that, that shit hit me like different. But before that, the Mailbox Money Project, um, he was selling his CDs. He was selling them for a hundred dollars, mm. and Jay Z had invested. Jay Z bought, I think, a hundred copies or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he didn't even know Jay Z, but Jay Z heard of him and was like, "Yo, I want to invest. Like, I'll take a hundred of those." Mm-hmm. And so that just inspired me, like. I just I want to do something different. Everybody mm-hmm. puts their shit on platforms, and like you don't get your money that way. You get a little. I mean, you get a little something depending on, but you gotta sell crazy to get yeah. just just ten dollars. You gotta sell something crazy. So I'm like, nah, they gotta pay for this. Like if you really, if you really support me and fuck with me, you gonna pay for this. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the biggest challenges for me too, because that was taking a risk. Like, are they really gonna buy these CDs? Just yeah. just because I said. You gotta buy them because I'm not putting it out. And before I even released them, I remember um, my nigga Nico, he was one of the first ones to hit me up. Like, yo, I need that. I think he bought like the first copy. And that was be- like a week before I even put it out. <laughs> and the first day I put it out, like sold all the copies. Then I re up, sold them again. And then the night that I did the, um, my, for the release, mm-hmm. uh, sold them out again that day. So it was just like, and it was all back to back within like a month. Mm. So that was like where I got the inspiration from, like watching Nipsey do that shit. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna sell copies. I'm not just gonna put my shit out on YouTube or Apple Music just for y'all to download. It. Like I want y'all to pay for it. Just so I, it, it was me. It was more the I wanted them to support it, but me it was more of I wanted them to feel the personal connection. Like 
I was dropping off the CDs to the people. Like, yeah. you want to see, I, I'll bring it to you. Where you at? I'll bring it to you. Like, I wanted people to feel that connection. It was, it was genuine. And do you feel like you built a better connection with your fans based off doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, the support is crazy now. It's like, now, if I say I got a show, I got people coming out. If I say mm -hmm. I'm doing this, people's tapped into, like, the shit that I'm doing. And I, I love it. I respect it. And it, it humbled me even more because back when I was coming up, like, I didn't think people will really, you know what I mean, tap in like that mm -hmm. and to see people do that. Not to take nothing away from nobody else, but I didn't see nobody else doing that. Mm -hmm. And I don't see people like going out their way for, you know, some other artists the way like they did for me. So I like took it like, damn, like people really fuck with me. So that definitely was just like, was mind blowing to me. Yeah, that's what's up. Where has, um, where has music taken you that you wouldn't have expected it to take you? Like, exactly. is there a certain place or, or anything? Um, I'll say in the recent years, it got me performing again. Because mm -hmm. I was the one, I was never really one to, like, perform. Everybody used to ask me to perform. I'm like, I don't really want to be on stages. I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. And then um, two years ago, I performed downtown. And that was probably, like, my first time performing in probably like years because my mentor had passed away hmm. and he was one of my like biggest influences shout out to james lily rest in peace um and what's crazy is the last time i seen him perform was across the street from where i performed my first performance in years he performed across the street like that was the last time i seen him perform before he passed away and that was like 2011 so i ain't been on stage since like yeah 2011 so music definitely got me back into wanting to be an artist again more than anything you know what i mean mm -hmm. and um yeah it's just been it's just been a crazy like within this past year or two it's just been it's just been so much going on in so little time yeah what did, what would you say is something that you that you know now that you wish you would have known back when you just first started with the music or when you were first getting started and started taking it seriously um how great i could be I think I slept on myself more than anybody did. Like I, I, I sometimes painted the uh, the narrative that like people slept on me, but it wasn't them. Like it was me. It mm -hmm. was me not wanting to perform, me not wanting to rap, me not wanting to put music out. Like I slept on myself for so long, and I feel like by the time I caught up to myself, mm -hmm. it was just like uh, not too late, but I caught on too late. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I was way ahead of my time, but I just was like afraid to show it, you know what I mean? What do you think helped get you out that box? Um, To be honest, bro, like, I don't even know. I don't, I, I just like, something just clicked in me. Mm -hmm. Um, If I had to pinpoint something, uh, it was like 2014, 15. Um, they were doing this thing on Facebook called, uh, damn, what's it called? Selfie, selfie flow Fridays. My man's uh, had started like every Friday, they were putting out like freestyle videos and shit rapping. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't, I hadn't wrote a rap in like I don't know how long. And I just remember at work I was writing a rap in my head too. I didn't even write it down. Like it was all in my head, bro. Like something just told me get back into this shit. Mm -hmm. So one day I was like, Yo, I'm gonna just do this Friday shit, and I did it. Shit went viral, like. First two days, it was like 1,000 views. And then by the end of the week, it was like 10,000 views. Mm -hmm. Shit was viral. And then everyone just like, yo, this nigga is nice. Like, where you been all these years? And I'm like, bro, like, I don't even know where it came from. And I think that's what kind of like started yeah. me in my head. Like, okay, people fuck with me. Like, like a snowball effect. Yeah, like, it, it, exactly. So that was from like 2014 to up until last year. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's what... If I had to pinpoint something, I think that'd be it right there. What would I mean, you? Oh my. Now you go, I was gonna say other than that, like, yeah, that was that was it. What would you say is one of your favorite moments that you've had from the music? Mm, damn, it was so many, bro. <sighs> Probably was the release party, bro. To see everybody mm -hmm. just come out, because like leading up to it. You could ask like Dom, you could ask all them. I was about to cancel the whole thing because people weren't like responding to it. Like I'm sitting there like, yo, nobody's buying tickets, nobody's saying they coming. So I'm just like, I'm about to cancel this shit. And they just kept saying like, nah, bro, like people gonna show up. You know how people are last minute. Mm -hmm. 
like, nah, man, they not showing up. Like, everybody bought these CDs, but nobody showing up. It's like, boom. So the night of, at the day of, bro, everybody's hitting me up. Yo, just sending their money for the ticket. Yo, I'm bringing this many people. I'm bringing this many people. And I get there. And I see all these fucking people in the room, like, packed wall to wall. I'm just like, bro, like, this shit was crazy. Like, I could have fucking cried that night. Like, I wanted to, but I was like, nah, I mean. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to that night. It was crazy. Like, just see everybody in there, my family, friends, people I never even met before, just all based off, like, word of mouth. Because they can't even say, like, they heard it on social media. If you heard the album, you had to have it personally. Yeah. That's what was so dope, because me performing that night, that's probably one of my biggest moments too. Everybody knew the songs. Mm -hmm. Like, matter of fact, the night before that, I had the ripple effect with um Nico. Nico brought me on stage to perform a song. And niggas in the crowd, the front row, they knew all the words. I'm like, how? Like, I just put this shit out yesterday. Mm -hmm. And everyone, like, that's what was so dope about this shit. Like, that's how I know, like, if you knew the words, that means you had the project. So that just showed me, like, people really went out and supported that shit. Yeah. Did you could did you expect this sort of trajectory? At all. At all. Not at all, bro. Like that shit just it's still mind blowing to this day. Like people still hit me up. Like literally, like matter of fact, just what, two days ago, nigga sent me a picture with a screenshot of him listening to the music. And this shit is, you know I mean, almost what, two years old. Mm -hmm. And niggas is still hit me up about this shit. And that's how I know like this project was pivotal. Like it really did something to the city. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, so let's talk about your next project a little bit. Yeah, oh. so you just uh, you just released a track list today on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a name for the project? Yeah, it's called Mark My Words. Mark My Words. Yeah. Word. It's, describe the sound and how this is going to sound. This new project. Um. So you're gonna you're gonna hear me like basically um just like I said uh, I'm spiritually tapped in like so you're gonna hear me do things that like you probably never heard me do before like it's not mm -hmm. just rap like you're going to hear all different type of sounds just me stepping out the box and experience experimenting with different sounds and shit um this is probably like i think i got like three or four features on it it's probably the most that probably the most features i had on any project that i worked on like mm -hmm. i'm not not big on features not taking away from anybody else but i like i work better alone because i like to work on my own time, I don't like mm -hmm. waiting for people. I don't like expectations from people. So everybody on this project is people that I really felt like deserve to be on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's another thing that, you know, I'm looking forward to people like, okay, he's working with this person. Oh shit, what made him get this person? Oh, I see why he put that person on this song. Like, mm -hmm. you'll see it. Um, so this album I'm expecting to be I'm going to say it. If not better, if if not just as good, better than musical therapy. Wow. That's my expectation. Word. And I'm going to do the same thing. CD. So, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it happens again. I'm going to get a copy. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to cop a copy for listen, sure. Listen, man. Hopefully, it's, I mean, hopefully people gravitate to it the same way. But yeah. I think they will. Mm -hmm. I definitely think they will. Yeah, man. And it's a good uh 16 songs. That's probably like the most songs that I've ever worked on on a project. I think the first one was like 10, Musical Therapy had 11 to 12. And this one, yeah. And this one, I try to structure it different. I always want to do like intro skits. Mm -hmm. So I got a skit on there, I got an intro. So I'm just like doing different shit on mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Would you say that lyrics are more important, are, are the most important, or production is the most important? To me, lyrics. I'm a, I'm a lyrical person. Like, I, I love bars over anything. But I'm also not blind to the fact that you do need good quality and good production. And you do need good hooks. You got to uh, you gotta entertain the viewers, the listeners. You know what I mean? You got to mm -hmm. keep them you gotta keep them tapped in. And I learned that with musical therapy. And I think that's why people appreciate it so much. Like, yeah, you, I, could, I could rap all day if I wanted to. But, you know, people don't want to keep listening to the same repetitive... You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. So you got you got the bars, you got good production. That's another thing that makes this album so special is that you have everything you're looking for in it. Like I will say, like it's definitely industry ready. And I know people like to take away from that just because like we're not famous, mm -hmm. so people like you can't compare that to this person, but yeah, you can. 
Mm-hmm. The only difference is, is they're, you mean they're signed. I'm not. Mm-hmm. But my shit is just as good. Do you ever intend to sign if if, uh, if an offer comes? Um, in certain cases. I, I wouldn't just sign just with anybody. Like I always said, if I sign, it will be J. Cole or Kendrick. That's, sure. that's like the only people I would... That's the only people I trust. You know what I mean? The industry mm-hmm. shady. I, I trust... I trust them because I know where they're at with it. I know what they went through. I see what Kendrick just went through with TDE. Mm-hmm. That shady ass contract that nigga had for years. Like he had to get up out of that. J. Cole with the same thing with Rock Nation. He had to get up out of that. And both of them started their own thing. So that's like how I look at it. If I don't start my own label or go independent, I'll definitely sign with like it's only certain people though. It wouldn't be with just anybody. What do you think feeds that drive within you to keep creating music and, and keep ex- expanding yourself and, and, and pushing yourself? Um, my experiences. That's that's honestly what um inspires me to keep making projects. It's the shit that I go through that like I don't do it just because I'm like, oh, I wanna make music and make an album. It's like, damn, how do I put all this shit that I'm dealing with? How do I how do I deal with this shit? And the only way I know is music. And that's why, like, this next project is I pro I proclaimed it as my last uh my last album that I'm doing. Mm. Like, I'm taking a step back from music, and I'm just like, I'm just done with it. What makes you want to take a step away from it? Um, I just feel like like I'm 31 now. I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this shit for 20 years. It's like. At a certain point in life, you get like, what am I doing it for? You know what I mean? Like, not saying nothing can happen, but I've been doing it. If you had a job for 20, 20 some years and mm-hmm. you still ain't the supervisor or the motherfucking general manager in that bitch and you still on the line, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And that's how I look at it. Like, I'm not where I want to be. And I just like, I feel like I'm. Um, my new journey in life is working in the community with kids and shit, like mm-hmm. doing what I've been doing. So I feel like I'm I'm content with walking away from music because I'm content with the new journey that I'm going. Like if I was just ending this shit and I was just going to be a warehouse worker, I'd be like, fuck, like what am I doing in my life? Mm-hmm. But I'm doing, I'm actually doing some shit that makes me happy. So it's not like I'm walking away from something just to do nothing. You know what so I mean? you're, you're content with this album? Yeah. That's like, this is... This is it. Mm-hmm. Like Where? I tell people, like everything is all on the album. Mm-hmm. So people like question, like, oh, why you, why you quitting or what are you doing after? Like it, it's all on there, bro. It's all like I, I literally left it all on this album mm-hmm. from the beginning to end. Word. Yeah. What, what what advice would you have for any aspiring artists who are coming up and maybe struggling to step outside their their bubble and put themselves out there? Um, I tell I tell my little homies all this all the time, like. Don't let nobody take away from your creativity. I just told my uh, my young boy this the other day. He was in the studio, and I guess the engineer, he wanted to change some shit. And I think the engineer was telling him, like, nah, I don't change it, da, da, da. But he wanted to change it, and I told him, like, bro, it's your music at the end of the day. The engineer's job is not taking, you know I mean, not saying, like, they don't have an input, mm-hmm. but the engineer's job is just to bring your vision to life. You're the artist. You mm-hmm. create the vision. They just bring it. You know what I mean? They they bring it to life. And I told them, don't let nobody take away from that. If you hear something, I don't care if you got to re-record it 30 times, bro. If it don't sound right to you, do it over. I don't care if you got to spend money for an extra hour. Like, So I say that to say, like, don't don't let nobody, you know, dictate with, with uh, your vision that you have for yourself. So if I give words to any up-and-coming artist, I definitely give them that. All right. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate Absolutely. you coming on to the Necessity you Show. Already, bro. Go ahead and shout you yourself me. out. So true. Album coming soon. Mark my words. In the meantime, go stream musical therapy. It's out on all platforms. So true. S O U L T R U U. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate thank you, you, Brody. Yes, Perfect. sir.